Well, good morning, everybody. It's been uh, quite some time since I've done a video, so I wanted to uh, get something put together today, just something to kind of go down the uh, GPIB rabbit hole a little bit further and kind of show you what I'm using as far as hardware to control all my instruments. Now, what I got here is I got a couple of cards. This one here is just your standard GPIB card. This, this card here would work uh, for most people. You can do, uh, you can you know completely control all your instruments. You can do basic uh, GPIB analysis with this card. However, this one over here, these are the uh, the GPIB Plus cards. And these contain all the extra hardware that's missing on this card here that allows you to use the National Instruments uh, uh, GPIB analyzer software that installs by default when you install the driver for these. Now the computer that I'm using, I'm using one of two machines. This one down here is a little uh, Lenovo M81. This one here is a, uh, it's got a second gen uh, i7 in it. It's got 16 gigs of RAM and a terabyte hard drive. It's a uh, a low profile, or it's at the small form factor uh, enclosure, which unfortunately requires low profile cards. And this one's currently fitted with a low profile standard GPIB card. And while it's nice to have something this small, the getting these cards is a lot more difficult and almost impossible to get the GPIB Plus version. So I've been slowly migrating this machine over to another Lenovo M81. This one's in the, uh, you know, the mini case uh, form factor. Now this machine will, of course, allow you to use the full height cards, and uh, those cards are a whole lot easier to get a hold of. This machine is also a, a second gen uh, i7 machine. Uh, 16 gigs of RAM, only this one has a uh, half a terabyte hard drive. And this has uh, a system builder copy of Windows 10 on it. I just needed uh, something just get, to get it up and going. <coughs> and uh, these machines here, I both run, I both run uh, headless and address them here in my uh, primary workstation. So anyhow, as I had stated, I run my machines headless, so I use the uh, the Windows uh, remote desktop client. And typically I have a number of applications running. This one here is the uh, NIIO Trace. This works good for most applications. I have uh, HT Basic installed. I use a couple uh, console windows. And I've also got, uh, you know, things like KeyCAD, LT Spice, <clears throat> the, uh, the HP uh, uh, 7478 emulator, which is a package that installs from the, uh, uh, the KE5 uh, FX GPIB tools. I use a VNA utility, time lab, and phase noise. Very good, uh, very good applications. And one of the other apps that I use here is, uh, since I have the, uh, the GPIB Plus card installed, is the GPIB Analyzer. And when you fire this up, it'll be, you need to select the, uh, the card. So you can select the GPIB Plus card. Then we can uh, turn on a capture window. Bring that down here. Actually, let me uh, move this stuff around here. I'll move this one over here. And I'll move this over here. So with this capture window going, we'll go over to uh, this window here and we'll run a really short uh, program. Let me send text to that bottom uh, spectrum analyzer. And let's make sure that uh, we can see things here. Hmm. Okay, what did I do here? Uh, oh, I know what I got. I think I need to close this window here. Make these two 
pieces of software conflicting with one another. Now let's close that. Close that. Okay, now let's try this again. <laughs> Can't run two capture capture applications at the same time, so there. Select our card. Turn on capture. Now let's bring that back over here. And let's try that again. Now it should work. So here we go. And there we go. So the software will show you what bits are active, you know, what uh, 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 control lines are active, and etc. And then down here we show all of the traces. So then we can switch to an inactive one, and we can scroll through them all and go through each trace individually. And then, of course, we can go over here and we can print the traces on the old handy dandy laser printer. And so there we go. See where you want to not have to look at it on the computer screen. Well, you can just uh, print it off and, and go from there. <clears throat> but yeah, this is basically what I use for instrument control. And uh, later on here, I'll go through and kind of give a tour of all this, all these instruments that I've collected over the years. I've uh, got one more instrument coming. I uh, was able to find a decent logic analyzer, so I'm waiting for that to show up. And uh, I also recently acquired, I bought a brand new uh, Fluke 87. I wanted something to supplement, if not replace, my uh, my Fluke uh, 8060A, which is up there. I've had it for well over 20 years, and uh, it's time to, uh, to replace it because it's getting pretty old, and these things are known for capacitor issues, but when I bought the thing, it had been, I believe it had already had that uh, issue resolved. It had uh, a bunch of uh, cal stickers on it from Fluke. So, uh, I've opened it up and looked, and I couldn't find anything wrong with it, or any evidence of caps leaking, so it still works. But anyway, guys, uh, I think that'll be it for now. Um, so, but yeah, if you, uh, Want to control your instruments? Uh, you can pick your poison. You can either just do basic stuff with this one, or you can go nuts like I did and uh, get these cards. Now I do have a USB uh, National Instruments USB instrument uh, controller card, but I haven't messed with that one yet. So maybe that'll be uh, further down the road. But anyway, guys, uh, I think that's it for now. So. We will uh, catch you all later, and uh, hey, thanks for watching. Catch you later.